Hello everyone, welcome back for another video. Uh, my name is Naomi and this is the Easy QS channel. Uh, in today's video, we'll be looking at taking off ad works. We'll be looking at when you are taking off some structure works, there is that soil that you are going to excavate. How should we book it? Uh, there is that group of soil which we shall dispose and that group of soil that we shall use to refill and run. So we will be looking at uh, how do you take off the two groups of soil so that you can be able to know how much soil will be used to refill and how much soil will be disposed away. Alright, so welcome to today's video. If you are new to this channel, kindly remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that whenever we post new videos, you can be notified. To all our returning subscribers, welcome so much. And just to remind you, we'll be starting the live classes soon. So if you haven't subscribed, kindly subscribe so that you can make sure that you won't miss out. So uh, in taking off some structure works, uh, when you are given a plan like this one, here we have the plan and we have the section. All right. If we have the plan and the section and we want to take off uh, excavation works, we know that uh, the first step that we always do is site clearance. Site clearance does not involve any excavation of the adworks. So after site clearance, we shall come to the removal of topsoil. Uh, the removal of topsoil, the topsoil averagely is usually 150 millimeters deep. So uh, we already said in our previous video that we should always take off site clearance for all the area that the building will occupy adding in the foundation spread. So, um, when we come to the removal of the vegetable soil, assuming this is the plan that we have, we have a length of 10,000 externally and 8,000 externally on the wind side. Uh, for the site clearance, the dimensions will be 10,000, then we add the foundation spread. And we already said that uh, to get the foundation spread, we will take the width of the foundation we deduct the wall, we divide by 2. So if this one was uh, 600, the dimensions here was 600, we shall take 600 minus the, the thickness of this wall, 200. 600, we deduct 200, we get 400, divided by 2, to we get 200 on both sides for the foundation spread. So when you are calculating for site clearance, it shall be 10,000 plus 200 this side plus 200 this side. So it shall be 10,000 400. Then for the winch side, it shall be 8,000 plus 200 foundation spread plus 200 foundation spread. So it shall be, uh, the dimension shall be 10, 400 and 8,400. This one will be for the length and this one shall be for the width. Right. So we said for the same area for site clearance, we shall remove the vegetable soil. So for the vegetable soil, the dimensions shall be the length 10.4 and the width 8.4. Then, uh, where do we take this soil that we have removed, uh, we have excavated a stop soil? The group of soil that we take, we, we remove from the soil, from the site, a stop soil, is usually uh, taken away from the, from the site. Then, it is used to uh, reinstate the soil around the foundation after the construction is done. What do I mean? After we have done uh, building the foundation, uh, for this, okay, let me explain. Uh, the group of soil that shall be used shall be called topsoil. This soil is not good for construction. This soil is only good for landscaping or for backfilling when the construction is not so deep. And that's what we are calling reinstating. Uh, after we have constructed the foundation walls, like this wall here, after we have done the concrete, we have done this wall afterwards, eh? we, and we started from there, we said that excavation always starts from the reduced level, this level. The whole site up to where we shall have the, foundi the foundation spread shall be at this level. Okay, then we have a recap for that. After we have cleared the site, we usually come and remove the topsoil. Uh, this was the ground level. We remove topsoil like 150 millimeters deep. 
Then after 150 millimeters deep, if we have not got to the reduced level here, because the reduced level is the one that we lay the hard coal, we usually reduce the level further up to the reduced level. So we come and excavate up to the reduced level. After we have got to the reduced level, now here it's where the excavation of the trench begins. So excavation of the trench will begin and we shall excavate the trench up to there. And up to here so the volume of soil that we shall excavate from the trenches shall be this width uh -huh. the length shall be the center line of the trenches if the, this section applies to here here and here the center line of this trench we, we already saw in our last video how to calculate the center line so the center line of that trench we multiply by the width then we multiply by the depth up to the reduced level that will be the volume of soil we shall excavate from the foundation trenches so where do we take this soil that we shall excavate from the from the foundation trenches this soil is usually added to a group of soil that we call the fill and ram so you will find in our takeoffs we have something like add r f and r if you find this one we mean after we have excavated this soil, we should place it in a group of soil that we shall use to refill and run. This soil shall be reused to come and after we have done the concrete here and we have done this wall, you see there is space which shall, which shall be left in the trenches. So that soil shall be used to backfill up to the reduced level. So if you find a statement like add R, F, and R, it means this soil shall be used for refill and run. Then there is that group of soil that we shall, we shall dispose away from the site. Alright, we have this trench that we have done. Then we have done the concrete inside the trench. Then we have built the wall inside the trench. The volume of concrete together with this volume of soil have replaced the soil that was in the trench. So the total volume of concrete and the wall everywhere in the building shall be disposed away because that soil will no longer need it. Do you understand? So in soil, we have uh, two groups of soil. One group, uh -huh, if we were to sketch them, it is RF and R. Then we have another group of soil called cut away. RF and R, it is that group of soil that we shall use to refill and run this one ca it's cut away we mean that this soil shall be disposed away from the site so the soil that we need at the end of the day is to know the amount of soil we shall use to refill and run then we also need to know the volume of soil we shall cut away because uh, when we are transporting the soil away from the site to dispose it it costs us money so we need to know the volume so that we can be able to approximate how much it will cost us. So both groups of soil are important. So let us see what volume of soil shall go to refill and run and what volume of soil shall go to cut away. When we excavate the trenches, this volume of soil shall go to refill and run. The total volume of soil in the trenches, when we take the center line times the width of the trench times the depth of the trench, shall go to, we add it to RFR. Then uh, we need to dispose away the soil that shall be replaced by this concrete in the trench and the soil that shall be replaced by this wall in the trench. So the volume of, co of concrete here shall be equal to the center line of the trenches. Mm -hmm. We already saw how to calculate the center lines in our previous video. Can you check it out? So we shall take the center line of the trenches. Then we multiply by the wind of the trench. Then we multiply by the thickness of the trench. Volume is equal to length times wind times the thickness. So the length shall be the center line. The width shall be the width of the trench. Then the thickness of the concrete. So all that volume of concrete, that volume of concrete, the same volume we shall add it to cut away. Because that soil we need to dispose out, to dispose it. Because that soil was there initially but now the concrete has replaced the soil inside the trenches so that volume we needed to take it away from the site then we shall come to uh, the walls the walls we shall calculate the volume of the walls from here up to here 
But now, uh, the one that has, re was, has replaced the soil is not up to here because we had cleared this, we had removed vegetable soil, we had uh, reduced the level, okay? So all the soil that shall be used, uh -huh, shall be excavated in the trenches. It's from the reduced level to the, to the concrete. So the volume of the wall from here to here, so the, how to calculate the volume? Length, same width, same height. The length is the center line of the walls, of the foundation walls. The width is the thickness of the wall, 200. The height is the height from the concrete to the reduced level. That volume of wall, we shall deduct. Remember, we, after we excavated the soil in the trenches, we added it to... RFR. So we shall come, deduct that volume of concrete from RFR, add it to cutaway. When you come to the wall, we shall deduct that volume of wall from RFR, then we deduct, we add it to cutaway. So all the soil that we had excavated from the trenches, we removed it, we added to RFR. So whenever we need to dispose soil, we shall deduct from RFR because it's already there, then we add it to cutaway. Whenever we replace another volume of soil, we deduct from RFR, then we add it to cutaway. There's a group of soil we haven't spoke about well. Uh, this is the, uh, the soil, vegetable soil, which we removed, we should discuss where should it be taken, whether to RFR or to cut away. So the vegetable soil, the top soil which shall be removed, it shall be added to cut away directly because we need to remove it from site just in case we shall require it anymore maybe when landscaping maybe when if this soil is not enough we can use it to reinstate maybe we had got to the uh to the reduced level then we did not have enough soil that's why we can use it to return the level to the ground level from the reduced level because here it's already stable below the reduced level we need very good soil for backfilling but after the reduced level now this one we just want to return the level because here we had already come to a lower level so that it can go back to the level of the ground we can back we need to backfill so we can use either this good soil if it's available or if it's not available we can use the top soil but once we remove the vegetable soil we first of all we put it in the category of cutaway in case we shall require it back we shall deduct from cutaway we add to rfr so uh for the site uh, removal of vegetable soil we shall remove the vegetable soil i had already told you uh, we shall take the same dimensions for site clearance the area then we shall multiply by the depth of the top soil which was 150 to get the volume soil is always measured in terms of volume Adwax is always measured in terms of volume. So we need to find that volume of soil for, uh, for topsoil. We shall add it to cut away. Then we come to reduce the level. If we reduce the level from the ground level up to the reduced level, all this soil that we shall remove, we no longer need it. Because here we shall come and fill the, it with hard coal. Then we do the maram blinding. So that volume of soil is no longer needed. So all the volume that shall be used to reduce the level, we shall add it to cut away. But now, uh, after we have backfilled up to this level, we need to come back to the ground level here. Because we say, after clearing the site, this, this area where we have the foundation spread, we added foundation spread. So this, from here, the level is a bit lower than the ground level. After we are done constructing, we have done this wall, we have done the hard cone, we have done the concrete, and we have done the superstructure. We need to come and backfill this area so that it can go back to this level. This what is what we call reinstatement of the soil. So this reinstatement of the soil, we shall require soil. Where do we get the soil? Yet, uh, all the soil that we removed from here, we added to, we added it to RFR. All this soil, we assume that we shall reuse it. Then we deducted the volume of concrete because it, the soil was replaced by the concrete. We deducted from RFR, we added to cut away. For the volume of the wall, we deducted from RFR, we added to cut away. So the volume that is in RFR right now is the only volume that we need to backfill. Now, if we need to reinstate the soil, this volume, where do we get the soil? We shall get it from the cutaway. 
So we shall come to cut away. We deduct this volume which we require and add it to RFR. Right? So uh, in summary, we have three, two categories of soil. The category of refill and run, and we have the category of cut away. Remember this one is not when it is already practical on site. We always prepare the bill of quantity before we get to site. And before we get to site, we want to know the volume of soil that shall be used to refill and run because that will cost us to refill and run according to the volume of soil. It's measured in meter cube. Then we, it will cost us to cut away the soil. Still, it is measured in meter cube to know how much it will cost us to dispose the soil. So, after we excavate the trenches, all that volume that of soil that we shall remove from the reduced level, we shall add it to refill and run. We assume that we will use it to backfill. But in case we do concreting, all that volume of concrete that we shall re, uh, that will replace the soil in the trenches, we shall deduct from RFR, add to cut away. We come to, when we do the walls, we shall deduct the volume of the walls from RFR, we add to cut away. So we shall remain RFR with the soil that shall be used to backfill. But now we need to reinstate the soil all around the foundation on the outside. So uh, to find that, we shall take the center line of reinstatement, which is usually outside here. Uh -huh. Let us just sketch it. Here we have the foundation spread. This is the foundation spread that was here. So if we want to calculate the, the reinstatement, the volume of soil that we shall need for reinstatement, we have to find the center line of reinstatement between the external wall and the, uh, and the wall for our reinstatement of the trench, external wall of the trench. That is the center line of reinstatement. This line, we multiply by the thickness times this depth up to the reduced level. All that volume of soil, we shall deduct from cut away and add to refill and run. All right? So in case you have any questions, uh, feel free to write them in the comment section. We shall be looking at them and addressing them. If you haven't subscribed, remember to subscribe. Most of you are watching and haven't subscribed. Daily subscribe so that you can be able to support us, uh, so that you can be able to continue making content for you. So see you in the next video.